Bienvenidas to Latina Literati. If you enjoy wonderful books, great places, and interesting people from the past and the present, then this is the channel for you. In this video, we're going to take you on a recent trip to New Jersey. We attended a family wedding and I want to dedicate this video to all the wonderful family members who made that weekend so special. We had a wonderful time and it was great to just be in familia. So this is dedicated to you, familia. So it's from this original Jersey Channel Island that New Jersey takes its name and it's tucked between uh, New York and Pennsylvania and uh, it was first named that or identified in maps when uh, Giovanni de Veranasso arrives in 1524. But as always, we want to go back even further. We want to talk about the indigenous people of the area and who they were. The Leni Lenape people lived not only in New Jersey, but they also lived in Delaware and in Eastern Pennsylvania. They harvested clams along the seashore, they hunted in the woods, and they also planted traditional crops like squash and beans and sweet potatoes and corn. And so these indigenous people taught the settlers about these crops and how to farm them. The first reservation, in other words, a few hundred years later, basically told you need to get off your land and we're going to imprison you in a reservation. So the first reservation in the United States is in New Jersey. So in 1758, the New Jersey Assembly says to the native indigenous people that are left, we're going to contain you in Burlington County and that's where you have to stay. And a mere 40 years later, 41 years later, that land is sold. And so they're each given a little bit of money and said, scram. And so some went up to New York to join other indigenous groups. Others went to Massachusetts, to other places to join indigenous groups. But you really see uh, how the ill treatment um, and the violence just diminished their numbers. And so they were less than 85 when they were thrown off the reservation. So again, from the very beginning, every one of these states is marked by indigenous genocide. And I think that's important to call out. I think it's also interesting that the colony was originally part of New Holland and the British then take control of the colony. And originally the governor of New York was also the governor of New Jersey. So there was a shared governor and eventually New Jersey then has its own independent governor. And from very early, it's considered an area perfect for industrialization because of the water. It has lakes and as you know, many factories need water to process uh, their goods. But it's actually known as the garden state because it grows a lot of cranberries and blueberries. It's called the garden state because it does, it's fertile and there's a lot of things growing on it. I think it's of historical interest that perhaps because of the armaments and the production of iron in New Jersey, more battles were fought in New Jersey in the Revolutionary War than any other of the 13 colonies. The famous Battle of Trenton was fought there and then it, there was one more battle and then the U.S. Uh, forces were able to beat the British. So I thought that was also of interest. So as soon as New Jersey establishes itself as an industrial area, its population begins to boom. And in fact, today, New Jersey is the most populated state per area of any of the 50 states in the United States. So I thought that was of interest as well. 
Of course, fast forward um, in the early 20th century when alcohol is prohibited, the coastline is a perfect place for people to bring in alcohol. And so that's where a lot of the alcohol being produced in other places is being shipped into the Northeast is on the Jersey shore. And of course that leads to many being there who represent organized crime and organized crime families. In fact, if you saw the series The Sopranos, it supposedly takes place in New Jersey. Yeah, oh. 23, right enough. Yes, oh. motherfucker! <laughs> Fucking nailed the day! Jesus, 23, Sophia's birthday. Should have had. Got like five ways there. Six is already. So there's a lot of gambling going on in New Jersey. Uh, that's why you have places like Atlantic City, and you also have loan sharking in the first 20th century. And you have the crime that comes with the families that are involved in these illegal and illicit activities in the major cities as well. But the seaside is not just a place to harvest clams. It's not just a place to bring in illegal alcohol. Uh, there are about 50 seaside towns along the coast and they're very popular vacation spots. And that's where you get series like the Jersey Shore. <laughs> where people spend time in the summer and on their vacation in these beautiful little towns along the shore. New Jersey also has a musical legacy. So Frank Sinatra, At long last, love has Jovi, Bruce Springsteen, are all from New Jersey. So there's a whole musical tradition there as well. There are lots of ways to get to New Jersey, but we avoided the New York airports and flew into Philly and had a nice brunch uh, in North Philly at a place called Cafe Maud. And then we, uh, in a rental car, went off to um, Jersey and tried a couple of the restaurants there, veg-friendly restaurants. You'll see here, an organic cafe was really good. <laughs> So uh, surprisingly, there's a whole community of plant-based people in New Jersey. And so it was fun to discover some of the restaurants there. Now for my book recommendations. So uh, we talked about the industrialization of New Jersey, and if you haven't seen the series Radium Girls, you should. But uh, the first book I'm going to recommend is The Radium Girls. And so radium is seen as kind of a fix-all. It's used in cosmetics, it's used in uh, science, it's used in a lot of things until the girls who work at the factory start mysteriously getting quite ill and dying. And so it's a fascinating story, of course, about corporate cover-up and about those who suffered because of it. So I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great book and, and a good series as well. There's another book also set in New Jersey uh, called Closer to Shore. This takes place around the time of World War I. And so you have, before World War I, it's kind of interesting. People didn't frolic in the waves. Uh, there wasn't even such a thing as a swimsuit. So it's World War I where you have people traveling to other places and coming back with the custom of swimming in the sea. So Closer to Shore is a book about what happens when a great white leaves its deep sea and gets too close to shore and all of the things that happen and how the towns react to this great white so close to shore. So it's, it's a little bit uh, scary, but it's also interesting because it really sets the tone of what the Jersey Shore was like during World War I. And for those of you who remember Judy Bloom, are you there? God, it's me, Margaret. Remember all those books uh, we were when we were in middle school? Well, Judy Bloom, one of her latest books uh, is called In the Unlikely Event. And it takes place in the 50s, also in New Jersey. Um, and it's a bit of a Cold War hysteria story, but it's still interesting because it's telling you what New Jersey was like in the 50s. All of the events that uh, occur in the book talk about the ever-present scare of the bomb and how young people are dealing with it in New Jersey. So I thought that was of interest as well. So I think that with that, um, we've come to the end of the video. And as always, thank you so much for being here with us. We'd love to hear from you. 
your Jersey experiences? What's, uh, you have any New Jersey connections? As always, we wish you mucho cariño, mucho salud, y mucho amor. Gracias.